Hey guys, Christina here, and today I have a look for you at what we read last month, which was February 2021. If you're new here, we are a family of seven and we homeschool, so we have a lot of books going on in our house for school, but also because a number of us just enjoy reading. So I'm going to jump right in with our read-alouds. All of our read-alouds this month go along with the Story of the World Volume 4 that we are currently doing. I'll link our curriculum choices up top if you want to have a look at them. Um, I talked a little bit about this one last month. Red Berries, White Clouds, Blue Sky by Sandra Dallas. And this was such a good book. Such a good book. I really, really like this one. I think because it talked about the challenges, it's about a young girl who's living in California when World War II breaks out and she is Japanese in heritage. Her parents came from Japan. And so she's taken to an internment camp and ends up in Colorado actually. And it's just about the reality of what happened and the kind of confusion and not understanding and what life was like, but also a lot of hope, um, a lot of anger, and a lot of questioning about what happened and why. Um, I know there's one part in here, <coughs> excuse me, where she meets a boy who he has German ancestry. He speaks German in the home and she says, well, I don't even speak Japanese. I, I was raised to speak English. Why am I in an internment camp and you're not? Um, so that was really interesting. I brought up a lot of good questions and my kids just really enjoyed this one too. An easy read for me too. I like that, that it wasn't too complicated. So definitely recommend that one. Then we moved on to Henry's Red Sea by Barbara Smucker. I'll show you inside. There's a few little um, drawings here and there. You can see like that. This was an interesting book. <clears throat> I'll read you the back of it. It says, World War II is coming to an end, but many of the homes and villages in the Men of the Mennonites in the Russian Ukraine have been burned and destroyed. Many of the people have died or taken, been taken prisoner. Those who remain are desperate to escape. So hundreds start west, looking for new homes where there is peace and safety. Some travel by cart or horseback, but most walk for weeks over hundreds of miles of war-torn roads. Finally, they arrive in Berlin, but still, danger is all around them, and they are far from a new place to call home. How can these hundreds of Mennonites going to, how are they going to escape out of Russian-controlled East Germany? How will they get to Canada or Paraguay? Only a miracle will get everyone to safety. This is a part of history I didn't know very much about at all. So it was really interesting. It's a very simple book in the way that it's written. It doesn't give a ton of history but it's probably the right amount for a young child. It was a quick, easy read, um, and it was worthwhile reading. I think it was interesting, an interesting part of history, and it showed the kindness and compassion of people after the war, of those who were living overseas, I should say. So that was that one. <clears throat> and then we read this really short one here, Hiroshima by Scholastic. I think we read it in one day. It's really, really short. And it says, on the morning of August 6, 1945, an American bomber, the Enola Gay, roars down the runway to the Pacific island Tin Tinian. Its target is Hiroshima, Japan. Its cargo is an atom bomb. The same morning, 12-year-old Sashi and her classmates tear down houses. It's their way of contributing to the war effort. Suddenly, a teacher yells, B-29, B-29. There is a blinding light like the sun. A boom over a gigantic drum. The Enola Gay has dropped an atom bomb over Hiroshima. Will Sashi ever see her family again? This was a sad book. It was super, super simple. Um, very basic about the events. Um, a little bit leading up and some after. Just enough, I felt like, for a younger child. So it's worth taking a look at this one. It's a short one. And then we moved on to this book here. The Osborne Introduction to the Second World War by Paul Dalswell. I've shared this one before when I first got it. I'll give you a look inside here. It's got lots of pictures. It kind of starts at the beginning, like what led up to the war, different parts of the war, and then at the end, it kind of concludes on what happened after that. I really like these books. I'm so glad I got this in the first one. Um, there's lots in here that I didn't know about and I really enjoyed seeing the pictures. I think sometimes we have these visions in our mind of what war was like and the pictures were, they're realistic. Some are from the battlefield. 
some are just historical pictures but they're not too much for children or for young children so I really did appreciate the way they put this together um, Osborne or Osborne however you say that so I really did like this book and that was a really good one and then we moved on to A Girl from Schindler's List by Rena Fender or Finder I love this book um, I really wanted my kids to understand that there were good people there were people who during the war tried to do the best that they could and so this book really explained it um, she is a survivor she's writing about her own story about being a girl on Schindler's List and just kind of a little bit before the war kind of what happened and then what happened to her afterwards and going back and trying to find her family and seeing if anyone was left and it was really hard to read at certain parts I think because not so much for my kids like some of it was really difficult but I think just because I have a deeper understanding of some of the things that happened that wasn't said in the book um, and they, she also addresses the movie Schindler's List as well which I did see many years ago and so I felt like as a parent reading this to my children they were getting kind of the the basis of it you know and I was able to get a little bit deeper from it so I really did like that one that's one that we will probably uh, read again in the future so then we actually didn't do any audiobooks this month we just I was feeling like we had read so many books about World War II and listened to so many that we kind of needed a break and we just didn't listen to anything this month so then moving on to my seven-year-old she discovered this series Sophie Mouse and so she read the first one a new friend it's got like quite a few black and white pictures there and then she read the adventures of Sophie Mouse the emerald berries she read a lot of other books and she reads from the good and the beautiful we have a number of them here but these are the two that she really enjoyed this month and she read those and then I had my how old are they now <laughs> 10 and 11 year old read part of the Christian Liberty Nature Reader this is book five to go along with the science that we're doing so we're we've been doing crustaceans and mollusks and we're about to move into like squid and octopuses so they've been reading from this book which I love this book I love that series then my 10 year old yes <laughs> He wrote down, I have a list here, that he read The Titan's Curse, as well as Archie. All my boys really like comic books and Archie and Pokemon and just a whole bunch of comics. Um, they, he also read Who Was Anne Frank to go along with our social studies. And then he read two books by Shane Peacock. He read The Secret of the Silver Mines. And then he also read Bone Beds of the Badlands. This is a series that takes place in Canada that he started with um, Ireland's Ire, I believe. And he's just really enjoyed the series and so he's been reading it. This is what it looks like. I'll read you the back of this one here. It says, Just when Dylan Maples is settling down after last summer's amazing trip to Ireland's Ire, I, the parental units are at it again, planning another family vacation. Only this time it's not a summer vacation, but an extended trip way up north to Cobalt, Ontario, in the bitter middle of winter. Once a thriving silver mining community, all that's left of the town's rich history, it seems, are the long abandoned mines. But a Toronto millionaire has hired John Maples, Dylan's dad, to retrieve a fortune in silver allegedly stolen from his grandfather by a business partner back in the early part of the 20th century. But what was the fortune? But was the fortune really stolen? And if so, where has it been hidden? So it includes Canadian like geography and stuff in it. So he's been liking this series. All right. So moving on to my 11 year old, he again read like who was Anne Frank, um, Archie, all that stuff. He also read this one here, Trini, the Strawberry Girl. This is a level eight from The Good and the Beautiful. This is the same author as the person who wrote Heidi. It says, every year an abundance of the finest, juiciest strawberries grow on the hills above the little Swiss village where Trini and her grandmother live. 
When harvest time comes, Trini is determined to pick up more to pick more than anyone else so she can sell them and help her aged grandmother with whom she lives. In her ambition, Trini learns some important lessons. She also learns that her strawberry picking is not enough to support her and her grandmother. Will Trini need to go away to find work? He said he really enjoyed it. So that's, that is that book there. He read a number of the Encyclopedia Brown books that we have, Magic Treehouse, um, oh, Percy Jackson and the Lightning Thief. This one here. He read this book. So that's him. And then my 13 year old. So he read Percy Jackson, The Last Olympian. He also read The Boy Who Dared and he said he really um, enjoyed it. It was a sad, sad story, but he read it. He read The Trials of Apollo, The Tower of Nero. He read The Gadget. He said he didn't really like that one too much. It wasn't great. Um, and then he also read the same Trini the Strawberry Girl, and he liked that one, who was Anne Frank. And then he read this one here, which is The Boy on the Wooden Box. And this is about a boy who got his name on Schindler's List. I'll show you inside. I don't think there was any pictures in here. Um, it says, Leon Leeson loved playing on the Krakow streetcars with his friends and tagging along after his older brothers. Then suddenly German soldiers were in his country, in his city, and in his home. Seemingly overnight, the life he knew vanished. The Third Reich wanted him and every other Jew in Europe dead. The darkest of times can unleash the worst in human nature and also the best. Leon Leeson lived through those times. Forced from home to ghetto to concentration camps, separated from his family for months, he experienced things no child should ever experience. But there was one thing that could never be torn away, his will to survive. And one man, a Nazi, showed him that hope can come in the most unexpected way. That man was Oskar Schindler. His famous list would mean life for Leon and more than thousand other Jews caught in the Nazi regime. So there's another option. Um, it sounds very similar. And he said it kind of read similar to the other book that we read, The Girl on Schindler's List. Um, but this is a boy on Schindler's List. There you go. So moving on to me, I read Giants, the Dwarfs of Auschwitz. And this is a story about the Lilliput Troop, which was a family of 10, but seven of them had been born as dwarfs. And so, it kind of it talks a lot about them growing up and their history and their father and kind of the pro progression up to the war and what happened at the beginning of the war but they end up in the Nazi camps and Dr. Mengele singles them out because he's very interested unfortunately in genetics or fortunately um, because they are the only family that actually survived there were two families that survived and they were both associated with this troop, this family, um, who actually went into the camps as a family and came out of the camps as a family. It was told, the story is told by the only surviving person in that family. And it was really fascinating, really interesting, really hard to read at times. And it also brought up a lot of issues about the ethics. They talked to a number of different people who were in the camps at the same time who were like twins and stuff who were being experimented on. It talks about some of the health issues that have continued and how survivors have been trying to get their medical records but they've never been able to to know exactly what happened to them. It talks about how they were treated differently, um, different embarrassments that occurred and it, it just brings up the ethics. Um, of how much do you share and how much do you not share. So for example, it talks about an artist, a Jewish artist who was made to paint Mengele's subjects. And that after the war, she found out her paintings were, some of them were in Auschwitz for people to go and visit. And she wanted her paintings back. She felt that that was her artwork. And it, it's been a long battle, legal battle. And it talks about that and about issues of, um, like there's pictures of some people who died and the family members don't want their pictures there. And so it really brings up that question of how do we remember the past, 
but how do we honor the people who died and the people who were part of that past or that living past? So that was really fascinating for me. I really enjoyed that one. Then I moved on to The Giver of Stars, and it's a story of a woman who comes from England to Kentucky and becomes one of the um, traveling librarians and what goes on kind of at the time and in the town and really fascinating. I really enjoyed the writing style and it was a good book. I actually ended up going to bed early one night because I wasn't feeling great and picking the book up thinking I'll be asleep in a few pages and I spent three hours finishing the book. So it's one that you just, you want to keep reading, you don't want to put down. I highly recommend. I really like that one. So that is everything. That's all the books. If you have read any of these, let me know down below what you think of them or what you thought of them and let me know what you're reading. Again, I always say this, but I love to get suggestions. So let me know what you're reading and otherwise I hope this finds you having a great day. Take care.